I feel like he's still the same guy that I met 10 years ago. He's so talented, his furniture is so beautiful and he loves it so much. More than anything, he just loves his workshop. He loves being in there, making things with his hands and he definitely has days where things go wrong and things are stressful, but I think it's all holistic. Being a good dad, being a good person, being happy and healthy, being fulfilled from what he does. traveling around Japan for a month in an RV, a few friends of mine, just snowboarding. Going through some of these, the little towns and we went to one of the like woodwork museums and seeing the craft there and the detail. And I was like, that's, that's what I want. And before, I'd never seen it before. It was like, you don't see pink cars until you buy a pink car and then it, there's pink cars everywhere or something like that. You know, I was like everywhere. I was like, man, this is insane. This is so beautiful. Look at this angle on this chair. And I'll go into someone's house and I'm looking at the table and I'm sticking my head under. It's like, how does that go together? And I feel like everything I look at, I'm disassembling it in my mind and thinking about how would I, how would I go through the process to make that. Design is unnoticed, you know, like good design is you don't, it just is. Whereas bad design, you see, you, you notice it straight away. The thing I love about woodwork is it's been the same for hundreds of years and the practice is the same and the process is the same. To be able to work on a craft that it's like I'm constantly moving backwards instead of moving forwards, you know what I mean? But the more I get to know my craft, the more my mind expands to how I can create things. So I still feel like I'm just at the beginning of this journey with wood. That's what I love about it. I mean, it's so, it has to, everything's so calculated and so precise and so it takes all of you. It's a real meditation, you know, working with timber to watch a piece slowly evolve in front of you and to know that, that each cut is intricately connected to the piece in its final stage. It really forces you to go slow. You know, you really have to work with the wood. You have to understand how the grain pattern works and how each tool affects each each stick that you're working on because you just can't make a mistake. As soon as I try and rush over something, it's in, in three days time, that that's when it's gonna show up. You know, if I don't take the time when I'm making each cut, and it is, it's precision, you know, like to, to a millimetre, otherwise it throws off the whole piece. I've had a client recently get in touch with me and so she, she loves lying under her dining table. You know, she just lies under there looking up at it because that's where all the intricate work is, is in the detail and the joinery, which when you look at a table from the top, it just looks like a dining table, but there's always so much more to it, you know, and that's really what I love in, in the design. Ali, do you want an avocado? It really is the best feeling ever having my own furniture at home. Like just sitting at our dining table that I made and talking that through with the boys, you know, like when we're sitting on the on our sofa or the armchair that I've created or on their beds, the boys really understand that it's not just our furniture, it's uh, the sauce that we use for our pasta comes from our friends that make pasta sauce, you know, the, the vegetables we get comes from our farmers, from the markets. Driving on the road, you see the cows, you see the little veggie patches that people are growing their food in. There's this real connection to land and there's a real connection of where things come from. Understanding that this handmade and this, you know, this creating vibe, which I really like. And that was the reason why we wanted to move up here was for the kids, you know, for what they're going to experience, what they're going to grow up in. I mean, Hannah, I mean, she's so proud of what I do and she's so, she, like, and the boys are integral with it all coming together. They're a massive part of my inspiration and she's always had a really keen eye for style and behind each design, she's always offered her feedback. <laughs> and 
and I think that's been a really big part of my growth, you know, is asking for help and knowing when, what I can do and what I can't do and knowing when I need time out and making sure that I have that time out because I'm responsible for more than myself right now, you know, like I'm responsible for, for them and for, for Hannah and for, I mean, not just financially, but like mentally being present. about as organic of a material as you can use, but it's something I don't want to waste it. You know, I want to make sure that everything I'm creating is good and and is suit for purpose as well as as well as beautiful, really. You know, like I want to make beautiful furniture. I want people to look after it. I suppose that's the core of what I do is designing things to last. The best thing that any of us can do is buy less, really. If you want to if you want to have a better impact on the world, if you want to reduce your waste, it's buy less, buy one thing once. And I think that's what I'm trying to do with JD Lee Furniture is create pieces that will last. Furniture takes time and so you really gotta not rush. But when it does come together, when I've like finally sanded it and I bring it down here and I put it on the ground and, and I just sit back and I look at it and I'm going, that really came together and it looks really good and, and that's really rewarding. <laughs>